This is the Toyota GT86. It's coming out of the pit lane at Harama, which is just outside Madrid. Um, you saw Formula One races here, and it's a fantastic circuit. I've never been here before. Um, last race was in 1981, won by Gilles Villeneuve, which is probably quite appropriate for the car that we've got here. Um, it doesn't look like it's been used since 1981, um, 30 years ago, but it has a certain charm. So let's get the basics of the GT86 out of the way. Um, full cylinder, naturally aspirated, and it's kicking out 197 brake horsepower and 152 pounds foot of torque. So not a great deal, but the important thing is that it weighs just 1,200 kilos. As we're on a circuit, it's obviously quite tricky to tell what the steering feels going to be like. The steering's quite light, um, but it's direct and it's quite quick as well, which is useful, as you'll see in a minute. This car, for some people, is all about the big skids, going sideways in it, because it's rear-wheel drive. And whilst that's great, the nice thing to know is that it's not just about big skids. You can drive around the circuit, and from the moment you get in it, from the sighting laps, you can just feel there's, there's movement. There's a really nice lightness about the way it goes about its business. The whole car has a certain lightness to the way you drive it. Gear shift, you want to be quite sort of quite precise. It doesn't like being rushed particularly, but if you just guide it around the box, it's a really sweet shift. If you press VSC Sport, then you've got well sport mode which gives you a bit more slip. But if you hold down the off thing, first traction control goes off and then you hold down five seconds and the whole lot goes off. And the nice thing about that is that you should be able to do skids. Like that. It's a really nice car to learn about dynamics and rear wheel drive dynamics in because, as I said before, it's light. So it's not just about the rear, you've got to work the rear. It's not all about the power because it hasn't got a great deal of power. So you can't just bung it into a corner and stamp on the throttle because that's not really how it works. You've got to feed it in. So you've got to work the front end into a corner, give little lifts on the throttle to get it to work, get the front hooked in, and then you can use the power and squeeze it on and use that all the way through the corner. Oh, this is a big ballsy corner down through here. And there's lovely uphill hairpin. It's a good job that the steering is quick because it goes quite quickly when it does. The Toyota is going to cost £25,000 when it comes to the UK, or a fiver there under. And well, so that doesn't make it a bargain, it does make an awful lot of fun for the money. So what conclusions can we draw from our time with the GT86? Brief though it was, well obviously it's not a road drive so we won't talk about steering feel and all that sort of thing, but it's a huge amount of fun. It's a smaller car than I was expecting, but for £25,000 it'll teach you an awful lot about chassis dynamics in a rear wheel drive car and yeah, I love it. It's really, really good fun. GT86. I have wanted to drive one of these since the day they announced it. What do we feel? Well, nice low driving position at Harama Circuit, and I've got literally no time in the car. Half an hour. So, let's have a little think. What are my initial impressions in this car? I do like the driving position. Wish the wheel came a little bit closer towards me. Gear shift, short positive yeah liking that massive rev counter in front of me with a very clear speed readout that works really well this circuit was opened in 1967 and it held nine Grand Prix between then and 1981 which Jill Villeneuve won and then it was just considered to be too technical I don't know how you drove a Formula 1 car around here because it is just too technical Toyota Europe decided to launch this car here. Stroke a genius, well done. Go straight.
straight to the top of the class. It suits the car perfectly. waiting for. This is the affordable rear-wheel drive car. Not a 911, not a Ferrari, not a Maserati, not a BMW M car. It's a Toyota. It's going to be well under 30 grand and it's going to give us that classic rear drive feeling. And it's giving it to me now. I can't tell you how excited I am about this car. Oh. Right, so the traction's off now. Brake away, but so what? Uh, whack the car in, and there it comes. <laughs> yes! Yes, yes, yes! Toyota's new £25,000 GT86 
to actually get here, but now that it's finally arrived in Europe, trust me, it was worth the wait. I think this might actually <laughs> just be the best car Toyota has ever made. Why? Because you could do this in it all day long. So before we get completely carried away here, what's the new GT86 really about? In simple terms, it's a rear-drive 1200kg coupe that's been designed to lure young, enthusiastic, reasonably affluent buyers back into Toyota's showrooms. And maybe the best news is, it goes on sale in June for 24995 and when you do this, it turns the traction control off completely, which allows you to do this. Everything about the GT86 has been designed to focus on and satisfy the keen driver. The dash layout is simple but clear, the driving position low slung but pretty much perfect for all shapes and sizes, and the visibility all round is superb. As you may know, the GT86 is actually a joint venture with Subaru, their version being the BRZ, which is a car that will drive very soon. But what does that mean for this car? Well, it means you get a a boxer four-cylinder engine up front exactly the same as you get in the Subaru it's a two-litre and it has 197 horsepower and 151 pounds-feet of torque which might not sound like that much nowadays but you have to bear in mind that this car weighs just 1200 kilograms and actually straight line performance is not what this car is all about this is what this car is all about I mean, it's just, it's just so nicely balanced and the steering is really, really unusually good for a Japanese car, the steering, because, thank the Lord, for once it's got some proper feel to it. It's very accurate, it's very precise, as you'd expect, but there's actually a bit of slightly old school 911E 968 Club Sport style bubbly feely stuff coming through the rim here and that's lovely, that's very unusual nowadays. In that respect, the GT86 really is a car from yesteryear and good on it for being so. I'm not absolutely convinced by the gearbox. Um, it's just a bit heavy, it's not absolutely click click precise like you get in a Mazda MX-5 for example. It's okay, but it's not a highlight. Nor, I have to say, is the noise coming from the engine. It sounds just a little bit rough to me. A little bit gruff, as if it's trying quite hard to deliver not that much. It's not a major criticism, but it's not a beautifully resonant free-flowing power plant which is a bit of a shame actually because I thought it was going to be beautiful I thought it was going to be a lovely engine this but I'm just a teensy bit underwhelmed by it conclusion love this car to bits basically love the steering love the handling quite like the engine no but overall it's a fantastic sports car so long as Toyota Companies like Toyota, companies as big as Toyota, continue to have the balls to produce cars as exciting as this. Us enthusiasts have got nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about at all.